and welcome guys to another cast from your favourite cast, Omega Kai. I'm going to be casting up yet another uh, Diet vs Pub game, but in this case it's Diet vs TSG. Um, I've done a couple of casts already, already between these two guys. Um, in this case it's just another cast um, to test the settings that I've got. Um, early in the week I put on some made some adjustments to the settings and they seem to be working really really well so hopefully those will go through on your screen now you can see an adver adver advert basically for Tal, the clan that I'm attached to if you're not really part of a clan and you're looking to uh, you know strengthen your play um, go to Tal.net and join up they've got 100 plus Dota players in all time zones they're looking for Australian New Zealand players they've currently got about 30 um, they've got weekly practices and structured coaching so if you're not particularly good in a particular element they will take your side and spend some time to develop you in hopes that you'll stay on and help uh, improve their community but most of all they're fun and friendly fun and friendly that's what you really want and uh, if you're specifically in New Zealand, those who have watched my cast before have already seen that I um, advertise the D2NZ uh, Facebook page. It's a bunch of guys who run uh, New Zealand events. Um, if you're in New Zealand and you want to you know, join that event or join that community, go to www.facebook.com slash Dota 2 New Zealand, Dota 2 New Zealand. Um, click like. The more likes they get, uh, the more power they have to draw more um, sponsorship and more bigger sponsors to events. Which brings me to the next thing. Um, they've got... Uh, an event coming on Kiwi Challenge Series 2 12th to the 20th of July um, you can go ahead and add um, Dota 2 New Zealand on your Steam account um, and stream watch their streams as the as the event is on I will be casting some of those games but I will not be as a, an official caster as such just a spectating casting um, those will be on my Facebook page and on also my um, YouTube page at a later date uh, we're going into a game game is going to be Diet versus TSG it's not particularly pub uh, it's, their, it's friends of theirs um I'm not sure what the actual relationship is, but um, I think they're somehow connected in terms of um, they're connected to some sort of clan type structure. They're all they're all members of the same group. Don't ask me exactly what group that is, but um, yeah. So it's about the third or the fourth time I've done a cast on these guys. So let's just jump into it. They've already started the game and they've already uh, part way through the through the through the drafting process. You can see here, TSG is looking to, to balance their bat rider. Their bat rider being um, of one of the favourites that Diet like to play with, um, and also picking up Nyx. Uh, just let me adjust the volume. Here. I'm being told it's the volume is quite loud for them in game. Um, here we go. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, bat rider being one of Diet's favourite pickups, um, and obviously banning up Nyx because nobody likes fighting an X, you know, right? You know, he's really, really good in that strong, is that trialing piece, but also he doesn't need abilities and he can just really, really play havoc on those um, blown guys all alone, especially those um, supports. Diet uh, ban choosing to ban an SD and a Visage. Unusual because of a good sort of standard combo that um, Diet normally pick up. They normally pick up Visage, they normally pick up Visage. Alchemist, and they normally have a really good time and have amazing plays, but in this case, Choosing to ban out uh, Visage and pick up a Darkseer as their first pick instead. Um, TSG picking up a Life Stealer. That Life Stealer is so so strong in that um, early early landing phase as a laner. You see sometimes in pub games he's used as a jungler. I don't think that's particularly his strength, but he's a really good versatile laner. Really really strong with that rage. He's able to able to shake off a lot of uh, lockdown and, and get escape. Also use open wounds to pursue. So he's really really good. They've also picked up um, Queen of Pain, which is obviously going to be their mid position. I'm going to say that call that early. I, I don't see Queen of Pain fitting in any other position, giving away that tactical advantage of what our mid's going to be quite early. They've given away that it's going to be Queen of Pain, unless this is some kind of next level draw uh, drafting that I'm not familiar with. Start picking up Rubik. God damn. Rubik being a... Uh, I've seen some really strong play um, in recent weeks from Rubik. Rubik being one of those heroes that either blocks in the drafting phase. So, you know, if the other team's got a Rubik, you not really want to want to pick up um, a Magnus or you don't really want to pick up a Tide or, 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 or somebody with a global, or such a large area influence map ability. Yeah. Um, because there is the chance that it could be counter, it could be picked really up by the Rubik and used as counter initiation, so it does kind of limit y your opponents in terms of what they should be drafting. But that's not always the case. Some people look, at, hey, we're going to deal with this Rubik. We've got a plan and a strategy for this, so we'll go ahead and we'll pick up those powerful alts, and we're not going to worry about if Rubik can pick those up. Ten not. TSG looking to ban an anti mage. They want to face that <laughs> thirty minute carrier win Five sort of scenario. Um, you know, if if your supports are stacking those camps, if they're um, really getting in behind and doing what they're supposed to be doing, leaving anti, you know, anti mage yeah, unharassed to farm and pick up last hits, then um he could be a, a powerful force to face against. And they're also looking to vent Ben out Weaver. Um they've obviously got an off laner in mind and they don't wanna they don't wanna <laughs> have to fight against the Weaver, I guess, in that um off lane. Quite strong, uh, with all those escapes. 
you know, Weaver, Slark, two heroes that you just cannot capture. Uh, Dyne looking to ban out Jinkara. That sort of one of those really good tri lane heroes that are really good at locking down team fights with that ice wall. With his ult really being influential in a team fight type scenario, and they're looking to, to ban him out. They don't want to face him either. So they've got obviously a draft structure in mind because they've already picked up Darkseer for their long lane. They gave that away early, and Rubik is obviously part of a tri lane. At least they've got some next level center Rubik play that I'm not aware of. So, so far, pretty pretty average. Just quickly look at the players on Dice Team. We've got Fen, I like Porridge, which is also Lost Boss. Uh, Fu, which we've seen playing with them a number of times. And uh, Buyback. Um, Feng, obviously, picking up the, the, normally the carry position. Sometimes a gyro, sometimes a, a lifesteal or an alchemist. But in this particular case, don't think it's going to be a strength carry. It's going to probably be a gyro if, if, if they can get away with it. Um, Porridge, Lost Boss, I haven't seen much... Um, play with him. I uh, have seen some games but not a lot. But Fu, we've seen Fu picking up those um, those supports quite strongly. Uh, excellent plays, particularly with Alina. I um, was quite impressed with a couple of games against TSG where he just dominated the game as Alina. Um, final ban out there from Diet. They look like they're banning out. They want to run out. They've also got a uh, don't want to f <laughs> ban out banning, ban Reserve making the, the pool of potential long laners smaller and smaller, which I think was probably working in their favour given um Given they've already got Darkseer at Clockwork, probably he's going to fill that long lane position, but um, y you never know. I'm not familiar with the drafting style or drafting techniques that uh, TSG tend to put use, although I, this is about the third game that I have casted of theirs. Sand King. Ooh, Sand King being picked up there. Pop potentially for that mid position. I've seen some very strong Sand King play as a mid hero. Um, it sounds crazy, but uh, you know, with that corrosive, what is it called? Corrosive, uh, caustic finale. You can really, really do some damage onto unsuspecting heroes, but also you can get some really decent farm. Um, TSG looking to pick up Vengeful Spirit as part of their tri lane. It's a very, very strong hero there. The Aura, the swap out ability, great for that initiation. Um, armor reduction is one of my um, top late heroes, is Vengeful Spirit, although you'd. If you watch the uh, Kiwi, Kiwi Challenge Series 1, you'd think I choked quite a bit. I did choke quite heavily. Ventral Spirit is the, the hero that I'm most comfortable with, and I didn't play very well. But uh, let's see. These guys, they'll show you how to play uh, Ventral Spirit properly. Admiral Conker. And Cooker being picked up. Uh, oh, Again, look. I don't know what position he's going to be sitting in. Likely he is taking that mid. Sand King being part of a tri lane with Rubik. Um, or potentially some new long lane strategy. I, Sanking long lane by himself? Possible. Um, you know, seconds. I'm playing solo again, yet again with my cast. For, for whatever reason, every time I do a, a, a random cast or a pub cast, my Cocos, my co casters, they're just not available to help cast. Exactly. Their knowledge is <laughs> what I normally rely on in the drafting phase, in particular because they seem to know the, the combos um, with more strength than myself. I'm still quite, quite green to the game, I'm still a bit of a scrub, so. They they they, just, they normally add that sort of element to it, but you know I can see some combos here. I can see uh, X marks the spot into an alt that's already going on. I can see a combination of uh, Sand King's stun with Conker's um, torrent with Rubik's yeah. pickup. You know with a vacuum there from Darks here, so Radiant it all synergizes very very well for Diet. Um, and the same said for TSG. They've got that strong Queen of Pain. Um, Life Stealer uh, Blink Bomb, which I, which you ex you'll probably ex expect to see, but they've also got um, other opportunities to to, to bomb. They can bomb with a Clockwork Cook, and they can also bomb with a, um, a swap out, swap out bomb, swap out a crucial hero into your team, but then you know swap your Life Stealer right into combat, explode with the Vengeful Spirit um, right there next to them, and you know just catch them unaware while also uh, pulling out of position one of their own heroes. And they're looking to pick up Miranda there. Um, they banned out that Alchemist, thinking that they they might pick up that Alchemist for Fiend, but they're picking up Marana. Marana, strong hero, if if you can get the timing down, if you've got the the full the full C ability to be able to know where your opponent's gonna be and throw those throw those arrows to the hit. And throw them from from the from the from the fog of war so that your opponent has no idea it's on its way. Um Diet picking up Shadow Fiend with two potential mids in this combination. I'm probably thinking that Shadow Fiend's gonna be mid against the Queen of Pain. Um but you know going to go into the game, we'll see uh, from this game what it actually will be. Um, no use me calling it because I'm obviously going to be wrong as I have been a lot of times. But you know, if it was me, I'd put um, Kunker into the tri-lane with, uh, with Rubik and, and Sand King. 
Seems like a strange combo, but it seems it's got a stun there, it's got a lift, it's got a torrent. Kunky can pick up those kills. Um, put the Shadow Demon into the mid position um, to fight against the Queen of Pain. And in the other trailing, what? Got a Morana, a Vengeful Spirit, and a Life Stealer. That seems pretty strong. Got two stuns, got a swap remaining. out, got an invisibility for late game. Yeah, so that's probably one of the ways. Are they going to be offensive lines? Are they going to be. Um, that's a good question. Are they going to be offensive lines? Have no idea. Um, I kind of kind of cast it in game for this. I don't know why they didn't let me. Uh, it's because it's not one of those. Cool, right? Um, so yeah, is it going to be uh, two offensive? An offensive meets a defensive trial lane, or is it going to be two two sets of defensive trial lanes? Uh, looking at the team makeup, we're probably going to see Diet pick up an offensive trial lane, whereas TSG is going to probably pick up a defensive trial lane. So this this area here in the top is where I'm expecting probably those two two to meet. Um, If I'm wrong, then we're probably, uh, yeah, which is more than likely that I am wrong. Um, oh wow, Fu picking up that, I'm um, sorry, just, just, just sort of tangent thought. Fu picking up the Sanking, not picking up the standard carry position that he normally picks up in this team makeup. Instead, uh, the carry's been picked up by, oh no, wait, I'm wrong, Feng, Feng picking up the carry, uh, Fu picking up support, support uh, SK. Um, Lopat picking up the Rubik and uh, Diet picking up or Buyback picking up the other the other carry. So Fu filling his natural sort of position as the support role, um, but choosing to support role as Sand King in this particular game. I'll be interested to follow Fu as much as I can. Um, a lot of the plays that I've seen that have been really really have been set up um, really well by Fu in the last couple of games against TSG and also Pub. Um, in the other t in the other team we've got Pikachu or Pikachu. Pikachu. Fix Cosmics. I've seen Pikachu a number of times. He normally fits that middle mid lane position in this particular in all the games that we've seen previously. But he's he's obviously on a life stealer. That's going to be a part of the tri lane. Um, their mid could still not could might not be um, Queen of Pain. It could still be some one of these other heroes, but I, I doubt it very much. Um, bit of a pause there just to try and figure out what's going on. <laughs> one of their supports, apparently, one of the supports for the Dire team for TSG is not responding. Um, and if you'll watch the other cast the other week, we had the same issue with the Keeper of Light. For some reason, uh, the very first game, who was that? I think it was Player? Slayer? PL Slayer? This guy here. Um, I think in the other game, he was Keeper of the Light, and for whatever reason, um, the game just would freeze. So they had to sort of host another game afterwards in order to determine if that was the f if that was going to go on. Uh, second game, so I had this kind of split cast thing going on. Um, yeah, game of pause, as someone has called this game. Um, oh, and he's back. They're into it, and let's have a look and see how these uh, these lanes develop. Oh, early smoke pickup from Morana there. Uh, we could be seeing some early gank action coming on, particularly in this in this jungle, in the radiant jungle. And. Same for yeah, same for the for the for the for the sorry, for the radiant. Bit of stuttering there. The radiant also picking up smoke. There could be potentially a early engagement in this radiant forest. Although I could be wrong. I'm always wrong. No, they're looking to protect their own forest uh, for this defensive tri lane, which I'm confused because there's a queen of pain there now. Is that the lane? Is the lane going to be a Morana? Yeah, obviously Morana and Visage are going to be in the tri lane, but this queen of pain really. Yeah. So yeah, P Pikachu picking up that uh, mid position that I said earlier. Um, in earlier matches, he's picked up. Really surprised he's done. Thirty seconds killer. to battle. I guess he uh, favors his, his odds against uh, Queen uh, or against the um, against the Cooker. Um, although that's not what I would have picked for the trailing. Uh, and the trailing here being Fu, uh, Feng, and and Porridge is is. is well, not bad, as I was thinking, as I thought before, that should have been sitting. I thought he might be mid range, mid position, but he's he's sitting in the tri lane here. Um, pick up those kills. He doesn't have a stun or a lockdown. He's going to be relying on the lockdown with the kill secures from these uh, two supports with Rubik and uh, Sanking having the, some. St <laughs> another pause. Yet another pause in the game of pauses. Fun, fun times, guys. Fun, fun times. Isn't it? Exciting plays where the game is just ported. And, uh, you know, <laughs> sometimes I think, you know, people, 
<laughs> Sometimes I think people um, just just pause for any god god known reason that they think feel is comfortable in a particular match of the Kiwi Challenge Series One. We had a guy pausing the game because uh, someone's car was stuck outside in the mud, and you know. I think it was the semi-final, the quarter-final. That's kind of not going to cut it at, at sort of that end of the the tournament scale. You know, it should be pauses with DCs or legitimate um, issues, and not just because oh, I want to go for a piss or I'm drunk and I need to go get something to eat, which I've I've seen in some other games. Um, in this case, apparently, uh, somebody's mum is on Facebook uploading photos, so the game is being paused because someone's mum wants to upload her photos to Facebook. Fantastic. And uh, the comment being, can you continue to tell your missus or your mum to get off Facebook because there's uh, 10 people actually waiting to see this game. And in fact, there's two spectators, so we're looking at um, a minimum of 12 players who are waiting. Also, you guys at home um, watching the game uh, on the live on the stream. I don't think there's anyone looking live on the stream right now, but the, I get a lot of views for Diet versus Pubs, um, and subsequently once it's been uploaded to YouTube. So those who are watching this, I apologise for all those pauses. There's nothing I can really do about it as the caster, but you know, um, hopefully. Um, TSG and uh, Diet will make up for it with some amazing, amazing plays that will excite you and thrill you. Faster I fly. And it looks like there's going to be an early gank on the mid position. This Coconut not realizing they're there. Vengeful coming in with a stun. Open wounds. No open wounds. No? Yeah, open wounds going down onto Tonka. Pull it up with a Marina. Nicely placed Marina, and that's first blood straight down. First blood! Well played. Is this Marina going to be able to escape? Oh, I haven't seen this. Just salve in order not to die, um, but we're well worth the last bit. Bottom tower is taking many wounds. Um, catching buyback off 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 guard with that um, three rush to the mid position in order that, for that first blood. You know, on the top lane, um, it's a Daxia. Sorry, I was wrong. I thought it'd be two two an offensive meets a defensive trailer, but it's actually a defensive trailer meets a Daxia. Daxia being caught out of position slightly with a stun, but he should be able to get there with that early surge that he's got. He is being excellently body blocked by a player, but a, and a nicely placed arrow. And again, it's an it's another it's second blood, second blood to TSG. Excellent, excellent body blocking there from um, Player Slayer, and uh, nicely nicely timed arrow from. Uh, Limp guy, or from the Marana. And on the bottom position here, we've got this uh, clockwork not really doing anything. He can't really do anything. Um, he's looking to probably cog these crew troops and keep them in place, or he could be AFK. Yeah, no, he's looking to lock as many as he can in, pl in place. Um, but excellent uh, pull and pull through from the from Diet in the bottom position here. Uh, they are behind. They should even take in a little bit of damage um, with the lane being pulled, at least. Oh, partially pulled. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. But yeah, they're trying to deny as much of that that CS as possible to the clockwork, which is doing an okay job. You know, um, I would have liked to see this camp to stack first, but you know, um, I'm not a pro player, so I, I can't really criticise. Um, in the mid here, let's have a quick look at the stats. Um, Life stealer getting slightly more CS, but obviously that first blood uh, assist or first blood skill I don't really know is obviously going to put him in a, a stronger position. And the Starks here now sort of looking to harass. You can contest any pulls that happen, but I don't think they're going to pull. I think they you've got um, two missing from top. They're going to be they've been smoked up. They're going to go in for a big play here. This is going to be a big play. This is going to be an amazing play. They're coming in. They have no idea. They, they know that they're missing, but they don't know where they are. And they come in. They're out of the blue. They know they're there. All of a sudden, there's a stun followed by an arrow. All right, clockwork coming on with the cogs. Oh, nice pickup. Unfortunately, there was a nice pickup with by the Rubik. Uh, he stunned them, but they did manage to pick off uh, that carry, picking off Feng um, with their amazingly, with their amazing play. There was an exciting play. I missed it. Didn't call it so great, but um, yeah, as you can see, Rubik, Rubik, probably saving. Uh, that could have been easily a, um, a, a wipe from their bottom lane, but um, Rubik was probably saving them by using that stun to lock them down. This life is sitting pretty low, dangerously low, given that there's a Conker right here, but also Conker sitting on only 200 hit points. Um, so it could be either way, they could either go down to each other or it could be a simultaneous kill. But we'll see this awesome rotation in from the Vengeful Spirit. Is she going to be able to ha assist here? Are they going to circle around this position here and try and sort of get this, this, this really low Conker? Or are they going to rotate top and try and get this Darkseer? 
No, they're going to try for the rotation around in the middle. Puka has no idea, no ward protect, no vision. Um, he senses something and backs up. And uh, this could be this could be a, another kill. No, um, Morana retreats. Retreat. Oh, Ventral just going to go in a right click down. And easy kill for the Ventral. Sun followed by a wave of terror. And wave of terror. That's called wave of terror. I didn't know that. Uh, wave of terror. And then just one right click to take him down, no problem. Um, much like cordwood before axe's axe, Dyer's top tower is under attacks. Meanwhile, um, Dyer managed to pick up one kill, and that person being Morana. It must have been in that early engagement. I must have missed it. I must have miscast it. There was a Morana kill in that bottom lane, uh, which I missed. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when. I'm probably probably just miscasting for myself. But looking at it. Uh, this Dark Seer being caught out of position again. Body blocking attack. good, body blocking from the Ventral. Amazing body blocks again. And another arrow coming in. No, don't even need the arrow. And another kick off. Another excellent body blocking position from the Ventral. Really doing a job. Really sort of giving those kills to the rest of the team. And then unfortunately that was picked up by Marina instead of Queen of Pain. But that's fine, they're both kind of carry, semi carry. So, um, and they're now one for five. This is not looking good. Let's have a quick look at the graphs if there's time to look at the graphs. Oh no, there could be some action again. No, nope, yep. Take time to look at the graphs. Um, it's currently at about 1200 in terms of XP, XP difference and also 1200 in, or oh, 1500 in gold. Um, item wise, why does it say he has an Aegis? I don't know. That is must under be a bug. That is completely bugged out. He says he has two ages of the Dyer's middle tower is not what it used to be. Um, that is for certain. What? <laughs> uh, sorry, viewers, I have no idea why he suddenly has two ages of the Wilders. That seems completely broken. Um, perhaps cheats are enabled and they've given themselves <laughs> an Aegis. Um, well, this could be a complete bug. Uh, this could be an item bug. This could be an, uh, this could be a clarity. I've seen this before. This is possibly a clarity. Um, Weird. Anyway, we'll have a look at that later. Make sure that um, it's not, not them just cheating because they're having such a bad start. Um, in the bottom lane here, we've got um, Porridge all alone, just driving off this clockwork who's sitting on a measly level 4 um, versus this, this tri lane here sitting on a 6. And it, it, but at the same time, it's Queen Pain is 7, and they've got these, there's another smoked up gang ready to happen here with these two low level guys. Open wounds coming in a bit early, but that's alright. Here comes in the sun, followed by an arrow, and it's just going to be. It's going to be another dead hero. Oh wow, and he manages to duke them somehow and get around those trees. Radiance um, Middle Tower is under attack! And, and he's going to get away. With a nicely placed turret and a nicely placed boat, and he manages to escape um, that gang. Um, well played, well played. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack! Yeah, you can see that that, that bug has gone away now doesn't have two ages of the models. Uh, it was probably a clarity or uh, oh, I have no idea what it was, but it wasn't um it wasn't two ages is there which is quite hilarious. In the bottom line here you can see they're putting a lot of pressure on this tower. This uh, the damage coming out from Feng now is gonna be quite substantial. Cosmos is gonna have no choice but to really just sit back and try and try and hope that some some TP reactionary TPs will come in and, and help save this tower, otherwise this is gonna be a right click down tower, no problem. Um, he might be able to hook, no, he's too level. He can't even hook in and, and sort of drive them off with some cogs. He's now in a position where he just has to kinda of sit there and hope that he can last he can last hit the tower tonight. Um, Queen of Pain doing pretty well, yeah, this, everyone's just kind of do, in, doing their thing, farming as they do, and yeah, here comes some reactionary TPs in, um, try and drive off this assault on the bottom lane, no, if they don't have any smoke, uh, oh wow, big right clicks, right clicks from the city, oh, an arrow coming in and hitting him just, <laughs> Foo taking the taking the hit for the team, taking the arrow to the face that was intended for Just Feng. Like um, Feng Feng being stunned but no follow through from anyone else. And he's going to try and wreck, he's going to die if he's going to try to get away. No, Apex TP's in and picks up some kill. He's probably going to pick up the Rubik as well. Rubik choosing to TP out, nothing that the Credit Bank can do. Um, Miranda's got no mana for an arrow, unfortunately, so they are Rubik easily just, just TPing out of that situation. And we have a we had a DC the whole time.
and it's a three for seven and against diet unfortunately this is not a game that diet would like me to post on youtube but um i guess you know you can't win them all um but excellent plays from tsg you know in the previous the previous two games that i casted before it was clearly all in that diet's favor all the plays big plays were done by diet but this time the tables have turned and the uh tsg was just putting a Much lot of pressure like on, on, before on axe is axe Dyer's top team play. tower is under attack. Looking at the CS, you can see here it's all relatively close in the top bands. There's a few hit seats, last hits in between it. Kanko is sort of st stepping out a little bit in terms of uh, the upper peloton of players. Um, he's sitting in that mid bracket, but yeah, everyone else sitting in sort of negative, poor um, last hits territory. But is that going to translate to to, to, to damage graph, uh, XP and gold graphs? And uh, not so much. Um, TSG only sitting at about 15, 1600 and. Um, in XP, but there's thing behind in gold. Diet's sitting actually in positive gold, um, so there's a big difference here. They've got you know levels in XP, but these guys have got um, gold farm. Their farm is um, more efficient, and that showed. Yeah, that, that doesn't make sense because the, the CS is. Oh yeah, I guess it does. Yeah, the CS is is stacked in the favor of the radiant. We're looking for another rotation into mid here. Are they going to try and pick off this this? Escapable Morana with her with her with her jump. Um, Life stealer going inside at somebody. Oh. Thought I had the animation. In any case, um, they're looking to try and pick them off, but they can't. Morana not over committing, so they really have no choice but just to come out and start picking up some CS. They can't sit sort of aimlessly in the wood for too long, otherwise they'll just start falling behind on farm. That, that advantage that they can't see, they've got, um, they don't want to whittle that away. I mean, you know, good players, they kind of have a sense for how things are going, although it's 3 for 7, they're probably, uh, item-wise, they're probably feeling pretty comfortable. And we see, we see a rotation coming into mid from here, from the, from Lifestealer and possibly also Eventual Spirit, yep. And they're looking to probably pick somebody off. Eventual, unfortunately, not level 6, doesn't have a swap, so they have to kind of rely on on out positioning the opponent, hoping that the opponent makes a makes a mistake while they jostle for position. In the bottom lane here, we've got Darkseer. Oh, it's Darkseer. I apologise. Uh, Shadowfane sort of just pushing the lane by himself. He can do it comfortably, given that he's had some CS and oh, nice, no, missed that. Completely missed that rotation around through the ancients, the dire ancients, and just a pick up and a stun. Follow through with a pick off by Fane, getting the last hit. And this. <laughs> this this uh, vengeful having a death wish coming in just to try and take on these guys by itself and uh, sort of at least contest some of the CS and we've got another DC from um, Clockwork let's take a good chance to take a look at the current items um, you can see here that um, Ben got his ring of Quilly and his trees he's probably going to build into a shadow get his shadow right now um, I like building in towards a mech um, Probably not too far away from there. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, he's got a little way to go. Um, Porridge just doing what Rubik's do. They don't really need anything about mana boots, right? So, for my opinion, so um, he's just picking up the wards, doing the supporting. He's got a he's got a stick there, so this should help him out. Same for Fu. Fu doing the same thing that I expect from most supports, just picking up wards um, and boots. He's probably going to go for mana boots. He may have the luxury of getting into a blink dagger like they're going to probably need that for really late game engagements but at the moment um he's just going to focus on wandering around with rubik with rubik to pick up some kills for for Fen, thing and you've got uh <laughs> buyback here just just got a bottle just got a bottle uh hasn't really been able to um pick up a lot of cs as we saw earlier on that list um so he's suffering slightly on the TG side, we've got the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain sitting already with the ultimate orb, probably going to go straight into that Lincoln Sphere really, really early. Um, Lincoln Sphere? Would you buy a Lincoln Sphere? Really? Queen of Pain? I guess so. Um, there is a lot of single target things, but she looks like she's rushing something. And I'm going to say at this stage it's a, a Lincoln Sphere. Um, Marana doing the what's doing this kind of pseudo support role, just picking up wards. Life Stealer got drums already, and also got phase boots, so he's not doing too badly. He can um, with all those extra kills that he's picked up, um, he's been able to get a substantial lead versus the Kunko in terms of items, um, given that they're both in that mid position. Um, Clockwork and uh, Vengeful not really picking up anything useful, not building towards any mech just yet. So if Dyke can get that early mech, they can turn this around quite subs quite easily. And it Radiant's is still really top tower is under attack. It's not like it's a given yet. There's no, there's no, cons no consideration at this stage for anyone to GG. You know, we talk about their band of, um, of difference. Five thousand being kind of scary. Ten thousand being, 
we need to play like geniuses in order to win at 20,000 and then nowhere near any of those bands it's it's, it's a few kills in it um, and you can just see it then it's tapering up towards um, in favor of the of, of, of the radiant And a little bit of an engagement it looks like it might occur in this bottom lane here if this vengeful and this clockwork stay stay pressured on this bottom lane. Um, the rest, yeah, things guys looking to rotate in. They've picked up a smoke, um, it's all on its way, it's on the courier, and so they're going to look to probably pick off or at least rotate around and pick off somebody else. And so is so is the die. The, the vengeful's rotating in. We've got um, lifestyle rotating in. Oh, he's looking to stack. Uh, Lifesteal are looking to probably, yeah, so he's going to stack and then they're all going to go for a, a four man engagement on this bottom lane here. Um, doing the clockwork engagement styles uh, with the hook in and the cogs and the explosion. Um, they're looking for somebody. They see no one. Um, and they, the lane's being pushed, so they choose to sort of fall back because they don't want to give away their position. Uh, Meanwhile, Diet is kind of just stacking the jungle, farming the jungle, not really doing much. They couldn't find any action. Both teams sort of psychologically looking for that easy kill, but no one really being able to find it. Um, maybe in this mid lane here section, this is where we're going to see some sort of action. Clockwork and Lifestealer with inside them just sitting in the side lane, but they had the ability just to TP in at the last minute um, if this mid, 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 mid turns into a bit of a battle. Oh, Feng. Feng has no idea. He's on his own. He sees this clockwork and he thinks this is easy money. And there's an explosion, an early explosion with, with open wounds onto Feng. Feng has no choice but to try and get out of here. Can, he can't escape. He should turn around and right click, but he, nah, he goes down. Many stuns and open wounds from Lifestealer like, really just driving home. Yeah. Didn't expect uh, Lifestealer to be inside clockwork. And, but boom, there you go. So TP's going in directionary, TP's going into top lane with Lifestealer and Clockwork, um, but uh, Diet choosing to, to, to fall back, they've decided, hey look, we we gave away too much on the bottom, we're not, we, you know, the gap's smaller now, so, but we need to still play conservatively, play smart, wait for that, wait for that um, mech, which I guess is not too far away. He just needs to farm with another 200 gold and he's got that mech, so... Whereas this Vengeful, sitting on nothing. This Morana, she's got mana boots, but she's, and she's got wards, but, you know, um, they're still going to really add to the team fight. It's going to help her a little bit. Um, and, yeah, so it's been working into the Shadow Bird. So if they just waited out a little bit longer, they're going to have that item advantage over over, over the Dire team. The Dire team having this, this this big lead now starting to sort of get smaller and smaller and smaller. That massive golf that they had at the beginning of the game now getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, it's still sitting at 2,000 XP advantage for them, and a, but still 500 positive goal for the diet all the way through. Uh, their farm being far more efficient. And they're sitting here looking to do an engagement diet, thinking that there's going to be a bit of a dive from the from the diet team, but it doesn't it doesn't doesn't pan out into anything, and they're kind of back into this milling around, sort of standing around and get, waiting for something to happen, sort of phase, you know, hoping that. Um, TSG are going to get overconfident push. And now the bait, Kunkka bait coming out. No? Like everyone just kind of jostling for position, no one really wanting to, to throw the game just yet. Everyone realizing that it's still a close game. It's anyone's game. You know, they can't see what I can see. I can see that this is this is indeed a close game. It is slightly level wise in favor of TSG, <laughs> but by it having that more efficient farm uh, going to be sitting on a more comfortable uh, team fight item type positions very shortly especially if this um they think can finish off the shadow very, very shortly uh, Xbox the swap coming out from conquer but no one really following through that kind of was probably slightly premature they're probably hoping that someone would follow through but no no fall back was called there's too many missing and you can see here they've got the smoke gang happening again they're looking for somebody They've gone into the radiant jungle because they know that Feng's missing, but he's already rotated out. He's decided I'm gonna I'm gonna go and look for the, for the easy farm and the easy camps. So just a bit of luck there for uh, Diet. A bit of bad luck there for um, TSG. This guy's getting impatient in the middle. Um, no, they want some action. They're all just standing there. They're all not really getting any CS, and so this is the phase where people start getting a little bit, a little bit annoyed. They're gonna push now that um, thing is rotated in. We'll share the damage from it, and it's TPing in from um, Darks here. So they're all TPing to mid, and there's all the reactionary TPs coming in from. Oh, only one reactionary TP coming in. Um, Morana and 
Vengeful Spirit flanking the position of Diet. They have no idea, but they choose to back up anyway. Oh no. It's a bit of a disjointed line here. Are they gonna are they going to engage this? Moran is out of position, so the longer they leave it, and he's swapping. Oh, swapping on Feng. Feng goes down. Oh and, and there's people dropping. There's a lot of eventual down. Clock works down. There's a buyback there. From 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 Feng. He TP's in. The damage going down on everybody. Who's gonna drop next? Life Stealer goes down. And they're, they're on the retreat. Moran retreats out, they fall back. And um now that things come back into the position, and so they've narrowed that with some great plays, even though it looked really, 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 really tight. That mech really paying. Oh, they didn't even use the mech. Oh, nicely dropped arrow. Oh, that mech just coming in at the right time to save them. And another three kills just going just like that. And, it, and eventually, look, looking pretty, pretty dangerous. And eventually going down as well. That's the complete team. Um, all the way through. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. If Dyer's you know, middle just, tower just shows was you that dead, Dyer playing the same game. You know, they had that bad start, but they managed to claw it back with those, those with that efficient farm and also those items that I talked about earlier before. They were in a slight advantage. Although they don't have the shadow, shadow gem doesn't have the, the shadow blade. This that mech really right at the end there helping out. Um, but just good, just good play, good play, excellent plays. Uh, bad casting for me because I didn't call it exactly as I saw it, but uh, uh, there's a lot going on. Um, Queen of Pain coming in, d doing some amazing damage in there, but just not enough. Um, everyone popping the charges on their sticks in order to, to stay up after the engagement. And, you know, that's why you have sticks. 15 charges after a scream puts you back into a more healthier, comfortable position. Alright, now look at those graphs. Let's have a look at those graphs. Booyah, look at that. That one sort of, let's call that almost a two team fight engagement right there. Putting, putting Diet back into the back into the green zone, back to where they think they should be. Dyer's bottom and tower is under attack. Farm, way, way above three thousand, you know. So now this is Radiance Middle Tower where it is wasn't under in their attack. favour, those those early great plays Dyer's from T S G now attack. really being whittled away by, you know, more efficient, um, stronger plays from and this is the Duke Winner. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Um this more efficient, more Concise play from Dai. Dyer's so top tower has there, fallen. Now there, but now they're Max on top. wishes it was you instead. A stop coming out, followed by a stun, um, and, an, and an arrow that's an easily picked up Rubik. Premature cogs for some reason, but that's okay. They've got the kill. They can back out. Um, earlier play here, we saw a pick up fourth Rubik, followed by um, a conquer torrent, and uh, well, the other way around, I should say. And that was an easy, easy Queen of Pain kill. So they lost the Rubik before Queen of Pain. That's probably a win. Uh, but should it even going down somewhere? Uh Shit of Demon going down. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Ch Chimarana, I didn't see where that was, but uh, I apologize. And now if you're in TSG you're probably thinking, you know, you're on this big mental buzz in terms of this we were we were we were we were leading the game. Now that's been whittled away. Now now according to the, they can see the result here, twelve to one now they're slightly behind. But you know the graphs say something else. They can't see the graphs. So there's no use talking about what they can see and what they can't see. Then coming up with the shadow blade. Gonna right click down the screen of pain. Not but not before she have already applies a decent amount of damage onto him. And she's coming back in. She's feeling feeling like she's got the advantage. Um she realizes there's not yeah. Oh wow. And, <laughs> and it's a complete trade-off, an absolute complete trade-off, and from probably the position that they're sitting in, that's a good trade for them, this Queen of Pain not particularly farmed, um, against the primary carry for, what is probably now the primary carry for um, Diet, so Dyer's good trade middle for, tower is under for attack. Team. Yeah, look at that CS difference, you know, uh, that's, what's that, it's 14, and it's 20, 18 sort of CS there, doesn't seem like a lot, but it's going to translate to items. Really good tower Meanwhile, here, we've attack. got ults going off, people dropping down, below really, really low health. Miranda being picked off, and Fink just picking up right-clicking. Oh, what? I'm not sure why he just didn't keep chasing. Just to escape into the neutral creep shot because he was surrounded. Um, I've been trying to right click them down, but he can't get away. There's no help, there's no support. And uh, Life Stealer also going down. Great pickup for Diet. Is the Life Stealer there as a primary? I would say he's the primary character. 
in an exchange they just they lost the shit they lost their own primary carry so a bit of a trade-off here but clearly in the favor of 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 diet having picked up an additional three kills now um we're to to, to test use one additional kill and we can see the turret coming in by a stun and then in sinking oh it's going to get both of them the game right down no problem cog's not doing anything unfortunately just a few seconds too late this cog's coming in just a few seconds too late they probably would have stopped that off and now we see we this almost steam rolling effect be beginning hurt. to happen Axe they're pushing both middle and bottom lane right in and there's no real answer here from TSG here, but they're locked the early attack. game advantage now being whittled away they're now on the back button and they're sort of sort scrambling clutching at straws attack. in terms of what they can do they're approaching this this bracket that I talked about before like oh shit bracket they're getting at that 10,000 sort of Dyer's middle gold difference is under and, uh, 5, 000, XP not so much but gold difference wise they're starting to get into that old shit territory Although they could easily, easily, by no means this is game over, they could easily pull it back. Uh, it is still a fallen. close game. It, there is a minor snowballing effect happening from, uh, from Diet, but you know, they still have the capability, more than more than enough the capability. We saw that early team play earlier from DSG, they, e they easily have the skill to be able to pull off a, a well-executed maneuver and, and wipe out Diet and just sort of take control back of, of this game so it's no they're no way means out of the game just yet it is still early it is still very close it is still very very tense you see radius of control radius of control sphere of control of the map yeah we've got the, the the radiant here sitting with all their towers their half of the map comfortably under control with some warding here um where's where's the, the dire they've, they're down to they're down to this kind of basically tier 3 position, no, uh, they've got some comfortable wooding here, but all this area here, just really not, they're having no idea what's going to go on in here, and you can see this deep ward here just being placed from, from Diet, giving them even, basically, kind of like this, in terms of their field of control. You know, and that field of control being, that vision, that field of vision control being really, really important, if you're looking to gank, or you're looking to push a lane, or you, you want to catch them out of position. And then they're starting to put up some defensive wards um, to get back some of this map control, but is it enough? I'm just drawing on the map, I'm no, wasting time. Anyway, um, back into the game, have a look. As a support, whoa, whoa. This is going to be an action. Could have been caught out of position, a wall coming in with a boat, and is it. Is it sinking? Oh, from the end, and well, there's a Barrow Strike, and it's two down, it's Clockwork down, it's Vetral Spirit down, it's three for nothing. Conker picking up a kill. This, this life still are having nowhere to go. He's looking to duke them in the jungle before his rage can come up. Can he rage out? He clicks out a rage, he clicks a TP, but it's just not enough. Too much right click damage coming down, and it's also... It's four for, for none. And that is now officially a snowball effect. They've now got this, they'll now be in that, that XP bracket now where I talk about oh shit bracket, but in terms of gold, they definitely passed it 10,000. Dyer's middle tower bracket. is not what it used to be. But that especially from my perspective, over 10,000 bit difference, it is a snowball. <laughs> Given that it is also 21 to 12 kills. Dyer's middle tower yeah. is under TSG attack. TSG really need to bring back some of the team players we saw in the earlier phase of the game. Um, they've lost their confidence, we need to see them come back. They need to really save this Rax, or they're not This game will be PG very soon. Oh, nice, nice swap onto a crossword. And excellent play there, they pick up the combat, unfortunately. Unfortunately, they lose the Ventral Spirit. They pick up the, pick up the Sand King. The scream goes down. There's damage going everywhere. People are dropping like flies. Bang picking up two kills from that engagement. Oh, and Bang caught out of position. He's looking to TP out. And he's going to get out. And uh, FX picking up Rubik, so it's a 3 for 3 scenario. He's taking many wounds. And they've taken the Mattel, but they haven't quite taken these racks. They did pull together right at the last moment with that synergy, and they were able to drive, drive off that diet offensive. Sorry guys, I'm on my own, so my casting is a bit subpar today. Um, just to recap what happened in this engagement here, 
damage all over the place, pickups all over the place, sinking alt uh, with a forest with a burrow strike, I think it's called. I don't know, it's called the stun forest strike. I uh, managed to pick off a uh, pick off a clockwork. I don't recall who died. You know, I've missed it. In any case, um, die looking to pick up the thing. Oh, die looking to pick up this. Um, this rush, uh, seen by Fink, but his Shadow Blade was on cooldown, so now he's going to pick it up again. He's going to just go in there and stand next to it. Oh, arrow coming in, and he comes in. Oh, drops, ults everywhere, vacuum. Kyle trying to save the situation. This is. This is bad. This is really, really bad. They've all been knocked out. Only person who got away was a minor and Queen of Pain. It just wasn't enough. And GG well played called from TSG. Uh, we may go to another round, um, but excellent play work. You could see that that was really, really tight. But it was not going in Diet's, Diet's favour at the beginning of the game. But now, with that sort of. Con what's the word I'm looking for? You know, concise, consecutive play. I, I don't really know the word Dyer's I'm looking for, but they played smart, they played safe. And they had that slight item gold advantage, even though they were down on XP. And just that one team fight after another team fight after another team fight that they just managed to pick it up. And well played, two guy. Um, great play, exciting game. And uh, with seven spectators, I hope I'm going to see this online. Uh, check out my stream. Radiance bottom down to the radiant, the spoils. What a, and that was a great game. Fantastic game. Um, hopefully this goes up online very very shortly. Yeah, thanks guys. Um, yeah, just check out those sites that I had at the beginning. Let's quickly go over them. Um, Tau, if you want to join a clan. Uh, D2NZ, if you want to be part of the New Zealand Dota community. Um, there's a Kiwi Sarens 2 competition coming up. You can have to go on Steam, but if you follow the, the link on the site from Facebook, you'll be able to uh, join. And um, this was Tired versus TSG. Thanks very much, guys.